millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. You know, if you want to take that big trip and that's important to you and something you value, do it. But um, my dad used to say, uh, you can have anything you want, not everything. And I took that to heart when I was 16. And my clients repeat that back to me. You know, I'm going to take this big trip, but I may keep my car an extra couple of years. And it's all the values and the choices that you have to make. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Come to Game, where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna, money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. Welcome back to the pod. I am so glad to have you here. This episode, it really got me thinking. Now I know how important core values are to your money, but I think even I needed a refresh on mine. And so I'm thinking that you might be in the same boat as me. So what do you value most in life? And do those values transfer over to your money? Maybe you're like me and you get caught up in life and spending money and doing things and don't really stop and think, hmm, does this expense or investment or bank account, et cetera, does this actually align with my values? I know that I don't do that enough, but this episode definitely has me thinking about my values. Sherry Greco reaches. She is the author of a new book, Maximize Your Return on Life Invest Your Time and Money in What You Value Most. She's also the co founder, principal, and chief visionary officer. I love that of Rappaport Reaches Capital Management and is the architect of the firm's Maximize Your Return on Life solution, where she aligns clients' financial planning with, you guessed it, their core values. It's pretty cool. Sherry is sharing on this episode how to uncover your core values and then how do you actually physically, practically align them to your money so every dollar you spend has a purpose. So thrilled to bring you this episode. I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is the Millennium Money Podcast, and let's head into the episode. We have a lot to talk about. (laughs) Uh, One place I just want to start is you say that something is missing in financial planning conversations, that we're not talking about 
core values when it comes to our money. And while investment performance is really important, it's just not always at people's top of mind, even though we think it might be, it it really isn't. So I just want to start out like, why are we not talking more about core values? Why is this not part of the conversation? Well, I think that the industry is so inundated with financial advice, and a lot of money managers are so impressed with their performance and the returns, and they love talking about the statistics, and they don't see that it just glazes over their clients' faces. And probably about four or five years ago, I was at a seminar, and I was a little skeptical. I went to the seminar. It was a women's leadership financial seminar and they had us in a room and they had us spend about 45 minutes to determine our core values. And I was kind of skeptical and I'm like, I've done this before, (laughs) done it before. And I have an epiphany came up and I got so much out of the seminar that I decided that I should bring this to my practice. And core values are so important. Um, We get on this treadmill. It's like we earn money, save money, spend money, invest money, and no one thinks about it. And I actually have in my book, I joke that uh, I brought it up to one of my uh, clients, this couple, and they said they spent more time picking the color of their car than ever talking about their values. <laughs> and I was like, well, I can relate because I think my husband looks at the engine, I look at the color of the car, but you know. Right. <laughs> but it's it's very true. And it's 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 weird. Just somehow life kind of just, I don't know, swoops us away. And we're not thinking about these things. And I've talked about values a little bit on the show, of course, before, but I always get this question that comes back and maybe you can kind of help us define this is how do we even figure out what our core values are? Like, how do we go through that process of kind of stopping life and figuring that out? Yeah. I mean, I, there's a list and you can go online and there's a list of core values, but I try to have people think about, you know, what brings you joy? And what brings you joy is not the same for everyone. Uh, Buying a new necklace may bring one person joy. Donating to a charity may bring joy to another person. But sometimes society defines what our value should be. And so, you know, what brings you joy? I have them think in their past, you know, when you were younger, what brought you joy? Um, What are things that are really important to you? What are things that you'd like to leave a legacy um, to your family, to your children? And it takes some time, but you, you know, what I have, um, a lot of my clients do is look at the list of a hundred values and I say, just don't think too much about it. Circle 25 of them, (laughs) then take a step back, take a breath, then go back and circle 10, you know, knock off 15, take a breath, think about it and try to get down to five, you know, and I have the overachievers that want to do seven or 10 and I say, okay, but, (laughs) but I really, um, you know, you need to take the time to really think about it and think, and what is things that I have found is if you have a significant other, it's important to share those values because you're not always in sync. And you also have to understand your values change. And a lot of people's values change during this pandemic. And I think they, they needed time to think about that. Yeah, I think we're some of us are still processing. <laughs> yeah, and another question I ask is, you know, what brings you energy? Um, you know, that is an important thing for people. You know, what gives you that positive energy? And that could be a way to look at your values too. Mm, I like that a lot. Yeah, it's it's crazy that we go through high school, college, adulthood, our 20s and we never really think about these things and nobody prompts us to pause and think about them. So Mm -hmm. particularly when it comes to money, we just spend money and, um, you know, we're just kind of living our life. And then I think somewhere in like your thirties, this is what happened to me was that moment of like, wait a minute, am I, am I doing this all correctly? Or am I, am I being really intentional with my money? And when I stopped to think about it, I was like, no, I'm, I'm spending money on things that I don't value and the things I do, I'm not. And so I think it's it's important to get to a point uh, to really think about it. But I'm I just don't understand why we're not taught this earlier on in life because this is a real priority. You know, I've had two really sobering situations. I had a lawyer that was a client that's seventy eight years old and said he wished he would have read my book 
30, 40 years ago, he ended up getting divorced. He was a workaholic and he thought his value was making money, making money. And when he took a step back, he realized that family was a value and Mm -hmm. he just didn't. And it was just really sad for me. And I was like, if I can change a life early on in their 30s and 40s. And um, a client like 89 years old called me and he almost had tears. He left me a voice message over the weekend and he's buying um, this book for all of his grandchildren because he wants, he says he never thought about his values and he wishes he would have. And I think that there's a treadmill that people get on and they just keep going and going and make money. And they, they feel, they think they feel good about that. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> Until we have that pause moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I have two types of clients. I have clients that feel guilty about spending and I have clients that just spend and don't feel guilty. And what I try to do with the values is, you know, if you want to take that big trip and that's important to you and something you value, do it. But um, my dad used to say, uh, you can have anything you want, not everything. And I took that to heart when I was 16. And I, my clients repeat that back to me. You know, I'm going to take this big trip, but I may keep my car an extra couple of years. And it's all the values and the choices that you have to make. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask you about that saying, because I know that's that's one of your favorite sayings. Now I know that it comes from your dad. And I think it is really impactful to to think about that because there's also this sort of world when we're talking about money where it's we can do anything, be anything, have anything, but sometimes there's limitations, whether they're, you know, family, society. I, I mean, there's a million different things that might limit you being able to do absolutely anything. But I like that idea of that there is sometimes a trade off that taking that big vacation is not a bad thing. Yeah, maybe you do keep the car a year longer, and that's okay because that aligns with your values. Yeah. And actually today is my dad passed away and it's his birthday today. So it's a special day. And so I'm glad that you brought that up because I am very sentimental. But um, if you have a moment, I I, want to share where this all came from. Yes. Um, When I was um, 16, my dad told all the kids, there were seven kids, that for every dollar we put in the bank, he would double it. So I got three jobs. And I was an overachiever back then. Um, But one day, you know, I had this money in my account and Bruce Springsteen was coming to concert. And I also wanted a pair of these fry boots. And I just remember this and I didn't have enough for both. And I went to my dad and I said, what do you do? I want to do both. I want the fry boots and I want to go to Bruce Springsteen. And he and I I almost have tears when I tell you the story. And he looked me in the eye and he said, you can have anything you want. You just can't have everything. So what is more important to you? And I picked the Springsteen and I went with my best friends who I'm still friends with today. And I, I have primarily spent a lot of my money on, on experiences and being with friends. And it was a lesson I learned really young. And I've tried to share that with as many people as possible. I like that story a lot. And um, I approve of Bruce Springsteen. So (laughs) good choice. You can't can't let down Bruce. No way. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So so if we we lay out our core values, then how do we look at our money, our lifestyle, and figure out, do these align? And then how do we make some of those shifts if they don't? Yeah, and that that's a, a really good question. I, I kind of look at values um, as a roadmap for two things, your time and your money. And I'll start with the money. So th- the first thing that I hope uh, my clients are doing and the millennials is some kind of budget. And, you know, I kind of use these broad guidelines that 50% of your budget should go to basics, um, 20% should go towards paying down debt, starting savings, getting an emergency fund. And 30% is your discretionary money. And that's where you really need to look at the values because you don't have infinite amount of money there. And so it really, um, if health is one of your values, are you spending money on a personal trainer and a health club or are you buying an expensive bag 
that really, you know, a purse that isn't your value. So you need to really look at the budget, see where you're spending the money and, and really be hard on yourself. And every time, you know, over a certain dollar amount or a certain category, say, is this one of my values? Is this important to me? And you might be surprised. And again, if you have a significant other, um, you know, you may have one spouse that wants flexibility and the other one's working 80 hours a week to afford their lifestyle. They need to get together on this. And maybe they don't need the huge house with all the expenses and they don't need the second home. Maybe the one spouse would rather work 45 hours a week or be of counsel or, or, or something like that. So you need to really take a hard look at that and talk about it. What do you think happens that prompts those kind of timeouts in life? Is it that we either go through a, a tragedy or a loss or maybe we lose our job or I, I, whatever it might be that sort of prompt that? But like, I'm curious with your clients, like what you see in them that makes them stop and realize, okay, I've got to take a time out and, and figure out a better way to do this. Yeah, I, th- I think it's a lot of those. I think the pandemic was a big, um, big eye-opening experience for people. Um, They may not have lost their job, but they saw others. And I think they realized that having a saving and having an emergency fund did provide the flexibility, the peace of mind, and the security. Unfortunately, um, there's a lot of stress for the millennials and they're seeing, you know, their friends going through stress. There's health issues that come up and I see sometimes they take take a step back uh, it could be a marriage that doesn't last and all of a sudden they're on their own and they need to figure out what's important to them, not what was important when they were together. Right. So it's usually a life transition or some kind of event. Sometimes it's just hopefully working with us. They get this thought and this epiphany that this is important and they need to start thinking about their values. And And I think the media has started talking more about it. Um you know, it's not as sexy as as some of these uh, cryptocurrency and fang stocks and all the things that this you know next generation loves to talk about. But um, I think I think we're starting to see a shift, and we're starting to see people look at their values. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations 
all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. We have an Ask Shauna, and this one comes from Joe. And Joe says, I just listened to your podcast on insurance. I'm currently a young single woman. Do I need life insurance? Nobody is dependent on me. Additionally, what type of disability should I get? Would my car insurance cover disability if I was to get into a wreck? These are great questions, Joe. And um, thank you so much for being a listener to the show. Obviously, that episode left a mark on you, so I really appreciate it. And thanks for sending in the question. I love it. This is a great, no-nonsense, straightforward question, which is amazing. But let's divide them up a little bit here. So I want to talk about the first thing, the idea of your young single woman, do you need life insurance? And you may not need life insurance right now, especially if no one is dependent on you. And let's say you aren't a co-signer on any loans or credit cards, car loans, student loans, anything with the word loan in it. If you work for a company, typically they might offer you up to $50,000 in life insurance for free. So in that case, at least you would have something for the time being. But I like to look at life insurance when there are life stages you're going through, like buying a house or getting married. You're in a long-term relationship. Maybe you're having a child or starting a business. Those are usually the best times to start looking at life insurance. But even having a little bit of life insurance could be impactful for your beneficiary if, say, you wanted to have a funeral or you wanted to be cremated or maybe you wanted to donate a little bit of money, maybe you have a special cause or charity that you love. So that might be another reason that you think about having at least a little something, but again, might not be the best time for you. So for disability insurance, Again, your company might offer some sort of benefit, so be sure to check with your human resources. But let me explain the difference between short-term and long-term disability. So short-term disability is intended to cover you immediately after a serious illness, injury, and long-term disability insurance is there to maintain income replacement. So it typically replaces up to 60% of your income. So if you can't work past the end of your short-term disability benefit, um, this is where long-term disability would come in and, and usually provide coverage, sometimes up to retirement age, depending on the plan and, of course, your illness or injury. So hopefully that clears that up a little bit. 
Now for your car insurance, that would cover you under personal injury protection, it's PIP, or medical payments, med pay, you might see either one of those on your insurance policy, no matter who is at fault. However, most policies do have some limits, so be sure to check with your policy and see what is covered. You, of course, also have your health care insurance, which is going to pay for your doctors and your hospital stays and those sorts of things. But then after that is where disability would come into play. So if you were injured and couldn't work, you could either look at your company's short-term disability plan, you could look at social security disability or your emergency fund. And for long-term disability, more than 90 days, you're in the territory of needing some disability insurance or some form of really big plan B. Uh, I would go check. There are companies like Policy Genius who sponsor this show, but I would recommend them anyway. Uh, they have disability and life insurance. Very solid company. I love what they offer, and I like the ease where you can shop online. There are other companies you can look at like Guardian Life and Mass Mutual. And uh, they offer disability policies as well. So there are lots of different places for you to go in terms of disability. But what I love about disability insurance is it's there to protect your income. And right now, in my opinion, for most of us, that is the most valuable asset we have. So I think life insurance may or may not need it. Disability insurance is a whole different ballgame. So, Joe, hopefully that answered some of your questions. And again, thank you so much for submitting this great question. If you are listening and you have a question just like Joe, head to the link in the show notes. You can fill out a quick Ask Shauna questionnaire. You can even keep yourself anonymous. That's totally fine. But I would love to answer your question. Want to know the number one money question I'm asked? It's how to get started investing without being overwhelmed. So if you're asking yourself the same question, then you have to check out the Investing for Beginners podcast. The hosts, Dave and Andrew, they break down investment terms and strategies in a way you can finally understand. I love that they're making investing accessible and they have an entire podcast dedicated to helping you invest better. Even if you're not ready to start investing, they explain the stock market and financial updates so you can really understand what is being said on the news. If you're ready to learn more about investing, I'd recommend you start with two of my favorite episodes. Listener Q&A, how do you start investing with a thousand bucks, where they explain how you get started right away. And back to basics of building our portfolio, where they explain how to build a portfolio from scratch. The Investing for Beginners podcast is a great way to start expanding your relationship with money. Find Investing for Beginners podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hi, I'm Karina Bemisterfer, host of Morning Cup of Murder, your daily true crime podcast. Yes, you heard me right. Daily true crime. Every day, Morning Cup of Murder tells you a straightforward, short form story about murder, true crime, cold cases, disappearances, serial killers, cults, and more. And I do that all in under 15 minutes. With over three years of stories and over 20 million downloads, the Morning Cup of Murder podcast has become a staple of so many people's daily routines. So why not add it to yours? Stream Morning Cup of Murder everywhere you listen to podcasts. And remember, stay safe. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. Sherry is sharing some more gems about aligning your money with your values in the second half of our chat. So let's get back to it. Well, kind of along those lines, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of people just in general turning to social media or YouTube, whatever it may be for investing tips. And some of those tips are maybe not exactly quote unquote right. 
for your particular investing goals. But I find something with investing is we're always looking for like, well, what's the hot thing? What's mm-hmm. the thing that we can uh, buy and that's going to maybe change our life uh, from a money perspective at least. But when we think about core values and we think about investing, like how do we pair those two things together? Because I think a lot of us invest and core values just isn't even in the conversation. Yeah. And it's, you know, I actually got my certificate and applied beha- behavioral uh, analysis and what there's a term that you just said, it's recency. And so a lot of people say, well, my friend just made all this money on cryptocurrency. It's never going to go down. I'm going to put my money there. And there's not a discipline or a patience going forward. And so, you know, we try to impart that you need, if you want to take some of your money, do that. But when, if you have a value that you want to buy a home in a nice area or a home for your family, make sure that that money that you're saving is not at risk, is not emotional investing. That should be a disciplined approach. It should have some kind of security attached to it. So it's kind of the values that you have, you know, flow into the investments. And it's so easy to get to think there's no shortcuts. There's no mental shortcuts when it comes to investing. It's a long, long um, road and you have to have patience. Man, I was really hoping we would have a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, I do this I do this quiz with a lot of my investors, and it's it's called the ball and bat. So if a bat and a ball cost a dollar ten, and the bat is a dollar more than the ball, how much does the ball cost? And nine times out of ten, someone says ten cents. And that's not right. It's really five cents because the bat's a dollar more than the ball. So a dollar oh five plus five cents is a dollar ten. And I think that um, we're so used to mental shortcuts that stock A went up 10 percent. I'm going to buy stock A today. I'm going to go up 10 percent. And again, it's just like the values. You have to take a step back and say, is this money that I'm going to need in the near future? If so, I need to put it in a safe place. I can't risk it. And, you know, I don't want to risk my future, my security, because I'm convinced that this particular investment is going to go up because the media keeps telling me so. That's good advice. I like that. That's like a good trivia question yeah. to ask. <laughs> I use it as an interview question with my associates here. I, I like it. I like it a lot. It's kind of a head scratcher there for yeah. a minute. And like, it can't be this simple. There has to be a little right. bit more to it. Well, tell me a little bit about your book, Maximize Your Return on Life Solution. Like, tell me a little bit about how this developed and w- what you want the, the reader to really walk away with. Yeah, I mean, I've been in the business a long time. I I started in the banking business, and unfortunately, um, my biological father died at age 32, leaving my mom with a newborn and myself, who was eight years old. And I I just saw the stress that she kind of went through. Um, She did remarry, and Dante Greco, who was my mentor, and I call him my dad, too, he adopted me. I was fortunate he raised me. He was in the banking business. So I grew up with this financial background. You know, I grew up with you can have anything you want, not everything. You should always pay yourself first. But I um, continually see the stress in people. And, you know, I still remember the stress. I used to, my family had banks, community banks, and I worked there and I'd see the stress when they came in for loans and they wanted to pay for a wedding or they wanted to send a child to college and they never had planned for it. So, you know, I really got in this profession to really get this peace of mind and get people organized and have financial peace of mind. But then, like we mentioned at the beginning, something was missing. It was the values. And So if you can pair the values with financial peace of mind, you have a winning solution. So I then have spent the rest of my career trying to do that with my clients. And, you know, fortunately, I can't reach that many people uh, with this. You know, two, three hundred clients is what our firm has right now. And I thought by writing a book, maybe I could reach more people and maybe they would just take one one thing from the book and change their life and try to add the values. And so um, the book's been out really today was like my official launch, but it's been out about six weeks. And every few days or every day I get an email from someone that 
that mentioned something in the book, whether it was a healthcare power of attorney for their 18 year olds that they just, or they encouraged their children to start putting money in their 401k, or they had a really deep talk with their significant other about their values. It just makes me good. It makes me feel good that if I can change one life at a time through the book, yeah. that's what it's about. Yeah. Do you do you have a favorite uh, tip or favorite piece of the book? You know, I um, have a lot of favorite tips, but if I could leave everyone with one thing, I say the the um, answer to financial happiness is to live within your means. If you live within mm-hmm. your means, everything else falls into place. You don't have a large debt. You have the flexibility if you need to make a change, if a job's not working out, if there's an emergency, you can help someone in your family. You can go to sleep at night and know that your that your financial situation is is where it should be. And that when I see people in trouble, it's because they don't live within their means. And if I can get more people to live within their means, I feel like I've done my job. And thinking about the behavioral side of money that you said you've, you've studied, obviously living within our means is something that we will all want to do, but there's so much like consumerism flying at us all day long, every day, and in lots of different directions. Do you have any tips for us from like a mindset perspective or just a behavioral perspective of, of how to be okay with living within our means? You know, one is be true to yourself and don't look at society's values because, you know, the media, big cars, big houses, jewelry, designer clothes, you know, that tends to be society's values. You have to really be true to yourself and what are your values? And so if you use your own values to make those spending decisions, I think you're going to go a long way. And you need to really... You know, I tell um, clients I work with, write them down, keep them handy, look at it every now and then, and make sure that you're true to yourself. And don't compare your values to everyone else's because they're all different. We're all different people. We all value different things. We think different things are important. Um, You know, the other tip is just, you know, don't get swept away by, you know, keeping up with the Joneses or, you know, the media or, um, you know, these get rich quick schemes. It's not going to work. Yes. Oh, if only it did. (laughs) I know. I know. If, you know, if it did, I'd be out of business. So I, you know, it's very true, right? (laughs) People always say, you know, can't you time the market? Can't you do this? I said, if there was someone out there timing the market absolutely perfectly, they'd have all the business, but there isn't. So, so tell me a little bit about, about your uh, sort of intuition about the market. Of course, I get questions all the time from, you know, some of the people listening to the show are are new investors. You've never invested at all. And some of them are a little bit more seasoned and everybody's trying to figure out what's going on and and what should I do? Like, what advice would you give to, to all of us? I guess they're really trying to navigate this landscape of investing in kind of this new crazy world that we're all in. Yeah, I mean... Again, no one has a crystal ball and you can put on CNBC every day and someone says the market's going up. Someone says the market's going down. Someone says interest rates are going up. Someone says interest rates are going down. And I always so I always say, you know, I don't know where the market's headed, but I do know a few things through my years of experience. And that's to focus on what you can control. So the first thing is you need to have some kind of investment plan. So you need to decide what money you're going to need in the immediate future and what is long-term money. On your long-term money, you need to come up with a strategy of how much you want in stocks, how much you want in bonds. Then you want to diversify. Make sure that you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. Uh, We're a big, big fan of something called indexing, which is just owning the markets. You know, Vanguard is one of the most well-known index firms. And I try to talk with people and say, you know, have your plan, implement it through an index strategy, because the only thing you can control in the investment world is your costs and your taxes. And the index strategy is a low cost tax efficient strategy. And I've seen people just get involved in investments that they have no idea what the costs are. 
They get stuck in these investments because there's load feeds to get in. Those are expenses to get in, expenses to get out. So if you just focus on what you can control, that's having a plan, being diversified, no, making sure you know what your costs and your taxes are. And I believe you should invest in broad diversified index funds. You're going to do better than 90% of the investors out there. Wow, that's pretty good advice. I like that. I like focusing on what you can control because there's so much that you can't control. And, and we always want to kind of grab at those things, but they are, they're very much out of our control. I think of a lot of friends I know who invested in Bitcoin over the last year and and some managed to, you know, get get very lucky, if you will, and make a very nice profit. And then some friends decided to hold on too long and lost some value. I mean, there's just so many things that are really truly out of our control. And, you know, if I could give a little advice um, for your audience that has 401k choices. Uh, I believe I have a story. I called it Target Date and Tears. And my daughter, <laughs> um, I don't know if you read the blog, but my daughter started her job. She just is an accountant at Deloitte and never asked my opinion on many things. But this she did because I'm in the investment world. She said, Mom, I got to pick my choice on my 401k. And I said, you know, Isabel, you should go into the Vanguard 2060 fund. And, and most um, when you look at your 401k choices, they're called target date funds and they're diversified, low cost index funds, but they're targeted to the date that you want to retire. And she says, oh, mom, that's great. Vanguard 2060. I'm going to put my money in that. That sounds great. But what does that mean? 2060? Does that mean I'm going to earn like 60%? I go, no, <laughs> that's the year you're retiring, Isabel. And she said, no, 2060, because she just graduated college. So I call it tiers and target date funds. But um, I hope your listeners will, I, if you put the money in the target date fund, it automatically rebalances. It's diversified. It's low cost. And you don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, I like that. Not having to worry about it sounds sounds pretty good in my book. <laughs> and one more tip. Um, yeah. Make sure you get them at least the match. I know when you're first starting out, it's extremely hard to put money away in a 401k. But if your company is matching a certain percentage, so if you put 4% in and they'll match 2% of it, that's free money. So take advantage of the match. match. Do what you can to try to get that extra money from your employer. I'm a big fan of free money. Yeah. <laughs> Who do, who's not? Yeah. Right. Let's let's take it. Let's take it. Well, wow, we have we've talked about so much. And I love this concept of core values and really rooting yourself in core values and then having that really flow out uh, to your money, to your lifestyle. I'd love for you to just leave us with something that you really want us to to walk away with, either remembering or an action tip. What would be your advice just of what we can step away with in terms of centering our money around our values? Yeah, I mean, the, the core values, it's really important with your money. But I do also want to talk a little bit about your time, because time is a finite resource that you have. And you really need to look at how you spend your time with your values. You know, are you spending too much time? you know, at a certain organization? Are you spending too much time helping other people? Whatever it is, make sure that it's within your values. But, you know, I really think that you need to mirror your financial planning with your values. And it comes down to looking at your budget and, you know, maybe every quarter or twice a year, really look at where are you spending your money and ask yourself, is this something that I value? And is there something that I'm valuing that I'm not spending my money on? Uh, one of my clients, after we went through this exercise, adventure ended up being a value that she didn't even think about. And Ooh. she says, you know, I haven't taken an adventure trip in so long. And so she decided that she's going to take this trip and, and go to Costa Rica and save her money and go rafting and climb mountains and do whatever she wants to do in Costa Rica. But she just said, you know, I've been taking these boring vacations and I forgot that adventure was a value. So, you know, take the time, figure out your values. Sometimes they change, but it's great to double check that. 
What a great uh, just self-discovery practice too. I really like that. Well, tell everyone listening where they can go to connect with you and grab a copy of your book, Maximize Your Return on Life Solution. Yeah, I have a website. It's sherrygrecorikus.com, S-H-A-R-I-G-R-E-C-O-R-E-I-C-H-E-S.com. Uh, you could also, it's on Amazon, Maximize Your Return on Life. Invest your time and money in what you value most. You can find it there. And um, I hope that the book will inspire you to maximize your return on life. Uh, there's a lot of financial tips in the book. There's some, I have the list of values in there. There's exercises that you can use to really help you uh, determine your values. I actually have charts in here where you actually put your top expenses and see if they're aligned with your values. So you know, I hope that you'll uh, get a lot out of it. And I think you're going to have some surprises. Often people tell me when they really start to look at it, some some values surface that they didn't even know were there and other values that they thought were really strong don't even come to the top five. I really enjoyed this conversation. I love the part where Sherry was talking about her dad's famous saying, you can have anything you want, but not everything you want. I love that. So my homework is to create my 2021 value list, and I'm curious, are you with me? I'm hoping you're saying yes. As always, if you enjoy this episode, please share it with a friend or family member, someone who you know would really enjoy this as well. You can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode guests, as well as sponsors. And please be sure to subscribe and follow Millennial Money Podcast in any player you're listening to right now, including Google Podcasts, and Spotify, so you will never miss an episode. Hey, you. Yes, you. Before you go, we want to say thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the links, tags, and ads you've heard on today's episode, check out the show notes or go to mmoneypodcast.com, where you'll find more episodes to share with your friends. While you're at it, leave us a review. And make sure to subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss out on all the money tips and tricks that will take you from a millennial regular to a millennial money expert. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode.